Welcome back to Pink Odd Bird. Today I'm here with something a little bit different. I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to make an A7 envelope. So these are the um, envelopes that I made for a friend's wedding and they are made on 110 pound card stock. 110 pound card stock. I don't know why that sounded weird when I said it, but that's the paperweight. And um, as I'm sure some of you know, wedding um, invitations and envelopes can be really expensive. Um, it's a lot, lot cheaper to do them th this way yourself. Um, and additionally, if you use envelopes like in junk journals and you don't necessarily have like envelopes, this is also um, a good simple way to make an envelope that you can, um, you know, put into your, your junk journals. And um, the kicker is I volunteered to do this for my friend and I don't have an envelope maker. So what I'll be showing you is how to make um, these envelopes without like a envelope punch board or anything like that. Just the tools that you see here. So quickly, I'll go over the items that you're gonna need to make this envelope. Uh, and I'll start with scissors. Um, I used the Tim Holtz scissors um, and I also use these scissors and the reason why is because I'm left-handed and sometimes when I pick the scissors up as I'm sure some people might notice when these cut sometimes if you cut um, in the on the wrong side I don't I haven't taken the time to figure out which way um, it leaves like a little um, rigidy kind of in the you probably can't see it but they, they're a little rigidy sort of um, and, uh, but they cut really well through, like if you, once you start doing these, um, instead of doing one at a time, you can probably do, you know, a couple, two or three at a time. And these are really good for that. And then these will be used for cleaning up, cleaning it up and also for tapering. So scissors and, um, also if you want to start doing, <laughs> cause I did a lot, I did 125 or so, give or take, maybe 35, 135. Um, and I, what I started doing was I just started using the X-Acto knife to cut through maybe like four or five of them at a time. So X-Acto knife is another option that you can use. You will also need your scoring tool and um, a bone, or well, a bone folder, or in my case, I have a Teflon folder. Um, this thing is amazing. It's made out of pure Teflon and it's handmade. Um, so this is something that you're going to use to get uh, the burnishing done to get those crispy edges on the envelope. And then a piece of scrap paper and some stick glue is what I chose to use because it was most economical and it was easy to use. A decorative punch or a corner um, punch what circle like a corner rounder whatever kind of punch you want to use if you want one um, obviously for this one I did use it because it is a wedding envelope so the edges are a little fancier and I will show you how to go about um, making sure that those are stuck down at the end so that when they go in transit they don't get um, you know bent in weird ways ATG gun or some other kind of adhesive runner. Um, I can't think of the name of the ones, but they're, they look like whiteout. Um, scoreboard. And, obviously, paper. Okay, so, this is, a, like I said, a piece of 110-pound um, cardstock. It's 8.5 by 11. That's the size. So, the first thing that you're going to do is put it on your scoreboard. And what you want to do is score at two inches and score at seven and a quarter. This is going to fit your um, five by seven invitations or whatever else you want to put in it. So that's it for scoring. <laughs> Pretty simple. And the next thing you want to do is grab your, I'm going to move the scoreboard now. The next thing you're going to do is, okay, excuse my cutting mat. It's been through the ringer, but never mind that. Um, 
The next thing we want to do is, oh, actually, sorry. You do need your scoreboard one more time. You're going to um, turn the page this way and score it at five eighths. So five eighths and flip it and five eighths. Okay. Now you're done with the scoreboard. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is obviously you can see it's starting to take its you know, you can see what's going to be what. This is going to be the flap that folds over, and this piece will go up. Um, so what we want to do here is where you can use your scissors or your X-Acto knife, um, but you want to get rid of this, this, and this. So these four little segments. So like I said, X-Acto knife or scissors. Um, when, like I said, when I started out, I was only doing like one at a time. Um, and I quick, very quickly <laughs> switched to doing uh, a few at a time. So cut, and it doesn't have to be a perfect cut here because we are gonna go back and, I hope I'm on camera, we are gonna go back and um, taper this a little bit. Uh, you can do that right away at this point, but, um, I didn't and there are templates that you can get online as well that show you um, the exact uh, um, you know it'll be a template and it shows you exactly where to cut to get that tapered um, tapered off properly okay so there's that piece and then I'll just cut this piece as well and get rid of that and get rid of this now I am doing this in a um, you know I did do this differently but for the sake of this tutorial I'm gonna do it this way just you know for anyone who might be doing this for the first time so um, the next thing you want to do is these edges here well the bottom one doesn't matter so much as the top one does but what you want to do is just cut off a little corner right where they intersect here and just this is so that you get it um, nice and um, finished look on your envelope and it reduces some of the bulk when you're actually folding the envelope and gluing it down okay so this is what you should have now a piece that looks just like this now the next thing you want to do is now like I said you can do this step at the same time when you're cutting these um, or you can do it separately but like I said for the sake of this tutorial I'm just gonna do it separately so what I'm gonna do now is give this uh, corner a small just gonna cut a small triangle off maybe straight this time all right and then flip it and do the same thing on this side and then I'm gonna do the same exact thing on the bottom two pieces. So we're gonna cut off a little, and I did all this by eye. Um, I can see pretty well when I've gone crooked. Um, and then again, like I said, if, you, if you're only doing you know, a few or one, I mean, maybe it's worth it to you to, you to, to use the template, I'm not sure. But for me, this is what, what was good. All right, so here we are. Now we've got the top slightly tapered off and the bottom part slightly tapered off. Now we wanna make sure that our paper is on the side where, the, where, where you've scored it. Um, there should be a little bump here. So we're gonna make sure that that side is facing up. Then we're gonna fold in and fold in and now, now here's where you're gonna need your burnishing tool. So fold, and burnish there. And then we wanna um, go ahead and fold this piece up and give it another burnish, burnish. Okay. Now, at this point, we're ready to glue down this flap. If you are going to um, add um, 
envelope liners if they are for something this is the point at which you would do that um okay and so this is my scratch piece of paper i as you can see have been using this now what i did was i made a little mark because as we know our envelope is only going to go up this high and it's going to also be slightly tapered so i'll show you how with the glue stick um we get that glued down. Now, the reason why you have the scrap paper is because you want to place it here so that if you are using this envelope for something that's going to be, you know, fancy and not like a junk journal where it's meant to be like distressed, um, you want to make sure you get this down so you don't get glue here because when you put this down, it's going to glue together. Okay. So as you can see, my little line goes exactly to where the envelope ends. I don't know if you can see, I have a gold line there. So when I close the envelope, you can see I know that I only I can stop there with the glue. Okay, so sit it right here. Take your glue and we start at our line and then we're going to go down at an angle, but not all the way to the edge because remember, um, you uh, uh, have it tapered, so you don't want to do that. And then the way to ensure that you do get those is what I like to do is take it and run the glue just on the corners here to make sure that the corners stay down. Now, in the center to the sides, up, side, up, okay? And then again, with the burnishing tool now, what you wanna do is to make sure you've got a nice crisp edge on the corner, take it down first and then slide it up and then down and up. I know I like to use my tool like sideways. I don't know, I, I just like using it that way. But the other thing about this Teflon um, is that when, you, when you're burnishing and stuff like that on these envelopes, you don't get that the lines that might like shine sometimes it's perfectly perfectly perfect okay so here now we have like an envelope cool right okay so we're almost there so our envelope is down oh and for the glue make sure you get the one that's extra strength extra extra doesn't have to necessarily be the craft bond because there is a there is a version of this that isn't craft bond that is also extra strength but make sure it's the extra strength one because you don't want this falling apart in the mail thank you um now as you can see with this envelope it is really great for things like junk journals or wedding invitations because if you have someone who you're making these for and they have a um, invitation suite all that good stuff can fit in this envelope because there's more than enough space there, as you can see. Tons of space. Um, of course, if you were gonna add this to your junk journal, um, I would recommend not gluing this flap down until you, um, you know, like you've seen tutorials where you um, stitch this part into the book and then uh, after you're done stitching it, then you can fold this over and then your envelope is sewn into the book. Okay, now at this point, you've got a couple of choices. We'll, we'll go ahead and fold this down. Oh, also, I would like to make another notation that before you fold that part down, um, if, like I said, if you're doing envelope liners, now's the time before you fold this. And additionally, um, if you're gonna be writing on these envelopes, it's just a lot less fussy to leave this part straight as it is while you're writing on the envelopes and when you're writing on the envelopes i would suggest um, if it's for something that's elegant you need to have something so just to make sure that you don't get like that if you write heavy-handed you don't get like embossing on the back or uh, it doesn't bleed through so you want to make sure and it's just easier to have this thing straight while you're doing that okay just my own my own advice I'm not saying my way is the right way or the best way it's just I make do with what I can <laughs> all right so now we'll burnish and burnish uh, also uh, before you might not have mitered this properly 
before you glue this part down, you want to check your corners and make sure that you didn't get any, you know, you, you tapered it off here good enough so that this won't fold weirdly when you go to fold it. Okay. Okay. So at this point you have a couple of choices. You can leave the envelope as it is. Um, and as you can see, you've got a really nicely closed envelope. You can also um, take your corner punch and punch the corners. Or in my case, I used uh, this decorative punch. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that punched. And one and two, okay? So there, now we've got a nice little fancy thing on your envelopes there, see? I don't know if you can really see that, but see? Okay, now, once you get everything that you wanna put in your envelope and it's all filled out and signed and everything is great in life, close it. And to get this sealed, what I, I, I mean, there's a few ways that you can do this. What I originally was gonna do was glue and stick it down. But then I got nervous that what if I what if my glue goes too far over and the invitation is sitting right here and then when someone goes to open the envelope their invitation comes out looking like you know ripped pieces of paper torn off of it because it got stuck. So I did not do that. Instead, what I did I did use it, but instead what I did was I used the ATG gun because as you can see, it's got a perfect like quarter inch little strip and coincidentally, coincidentally, coin as a coincidence, when I use this punch, um, it makes like a almost about a quarter of an inch little um, strip here. So I was like, perfect. Now, if you don't have an ATG gun, you can use this, but just be mindful of how much space you have on your flap to here. Now, you could probably glue here too, but then also you don't want a lot of glue sticking out here. So just, you know, think about it if you're gonna use a different uh, method and if you don't have one of these. So what I did was I took it, run it down, and you got a perfect little strip there and it's gonna be right up to the edge, so you don't have to worry about that, that part of the flap lifting. And then, to make sure that these little babies stay down, I take a little bit of glue, not too much, because, um, oh, that's the other thing too, when you're um, burnishing, you wanna make sure that you check your tool in case you got glue on it while you were burnishing, because you don't wanna run that all over your envelope. Okay. So now we've got that. And then these are gonna stay down. And then our center piece is gonna stay down. Just like that. And there you go. Now, it obviously, I timed it. This, uh, what are we at, 18 minutes? This took a little bit longer because I was going step by step, but the money that it takes to make, you know, if you bought 125 envelopes like this, it would easily go about $100 or more. To make these, I all I did was buy the paper and I obviously had most of these tools already. Um, I just didn't have the glue, so I bought the glue and it was a pack of four, what I got, I got a coupon um, at Michael's. So the glue came up to like two or $3. The paper was $17. So other than that, it took me $20 to make 125 of these. And, or I think 135, because he gave me some extra ones, um, paper. And uh, additionally, forgot what I was gonna say. Oh, it goes a lot faster when you start, um, when you when you get the hang of it when you're in you know when you're in the swing of it of it it takes you between a minute and 25 seconds and a minute and a half to make this um, what i would suggest doing is first um get all of your papers scored then after you have all of your papers scored 
cut those four corners off. Okay, so then you'll have a big pile of paper with the four corners cut off. Then go back and do your tapering. Then go back and do your, um, then you're ready to start assembling. So at the assembly, assembly part is where you can start um, folding your sides, gluing them down, and the envelope's done. So like I said, that's the way I would suggest doing it because it takes a lot longer if you do that the way that I just showed you. So do it in increments, scoring, then um, the cutting and tapering, then uh, after you have all of that done, you don't have to worry about that part anymore, then you can focus on just building the envelopes themselves. Now what I did on hers was I took a little strip of washi and put it on the front and um, on the back I did little gold hearts stickers. So you can dress them up however you want, but that's how you make an A7 envelope. And I'm sure that you can probably use this uh, method for other sizes, but I had to do A7, which is a five by seven envelope um, without a punch board. So really easy and basic tools for the most part. If anything, you might need a, you know, some kind of, like I said, adhesive, but that's basically it. That's how you do the envelope. So I hope you found this helpful and I'm sorry the video went a little long, but I, I feel like, you know, everything that I said needed to be said. So, um, thanks for being here and we'll see you next time. Bye.